This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the Cary Ford in Cary, Ohio, this is Monday from 10 to 2, as well as this Sunday, they'll be at the New Regal Food Truck Fundraiser in downtown New Regal from 2.30 to 5.30. Again, Monday in Cary, New Regal this Sunday. Check out the Mad Canadian social medias, Twitter and Facebook, to find out more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, Marine-owned, premium, small-batch, roast-to-order coffee company. Roast-to-order is one of the most important things here um, because the coffee isn't getting stale. Uh, you, you get those oils, right? Because a lot, of, a lot of what makes coffee coffee are just the oils that come from the beans. So that's one of the reasons why doing a fresh grinding of the beans is so much better than buying it pre-ground because when you grind it, you lose those oils. But another way you lose those oils is just through age. And I know the bag is sealed and I know all of that, but the, the fresher those oils, the better. So the closer you are to the roast and therefore also the closer you are to the grind, the fresher, more flavorful a coffee is going to be. So what you don't want is your coffee's uh, sitting on a shelf for weeks and months on end because it just loses quality the further you go along. So that's why you should, in my opinion, always buy your coffee fresh roast to order. And if you're not doing home grinding, if you're getting it ground by the Iron Bean Coffee Company, you're also still not that far away from your coffee being freshly ground because it was literally just roasted, ground, and sent to you. And that's why you should always buy from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, the Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster what's up youtube what is up discord how you guys doing today very odd not having ohio state football very odd uh but got to do got to get some um some other stuff done over the weekend here yeah. in preparation to watch the second half of Ohio State season here. Ooh, the second half. Kyle, does that mean we're in the mid-season? We are. So let's... You know, Kyle, let's give out some mid-season awards. We, I so just like now a... thought of that. I totally wasn't preparing this ahead of time. Let's get into that. Let's get into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Kyle, I have no complaints. That That's about where I'm at right now. I think we're all good. I think everything's great. And um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and uh, grade the Ohio State football team because this is our this is our midseason review. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things. Uh, here on Standard and Grade, which is the Monday episode of the Buckeye Sloopcast, we typically rank the Ohio State performance based off of the previous week. Well, we had no Ohio State performance this previous weekend. Therefore, uh, what better time than to hand out grades for the season as a whole so far? And also, uh, I asked our Sloopcats to... Uh, Help us with some awards. Maybe some superlatives might be uh, a, a good way of describing that as well. So they made up a bunch of weird categories. Um, and so I have only kind of looked at them. I have not looked at all of them in detail. So I think that'll be the second half of the show. First half of the show, we're going to hand out some grades. So Kyle, let's quit uh, Let's quit screwing around and get to uh, handing out some grades. All right, sure. So... Where do we want to start? Do we want to start just giving out each position here, grading yeah. for the season as a whole? Yeah, yeah, All right. yeah. All right, so let's let's start with the offense here. So I just pulled this up here for you, Jerry. So you should have it here. So the offense here, just rankings for the for the entire season so far. Ohio State offense 
number one in points per game, number one in yards per game. Uh, let's see, number three in rushing yards per game, and number four, oh, uh, sorry, number five in passing yards per game, too. So offensively, right now, Ohio State's just clicking on all cylinders here. You can't ask for much better than what they um than what they're doing right now. Yeah, um, I, the offense as a whole, I think, is. I don't want to say. I don't want to say they're exceeding expectations. So one of the things we like to do on the standard and grade episode is we like to acknowledge that we grade based off of expectations, which means you know, take the offensive line and the wide receiving crew two strengths that we knew were going to be Ohio State strengths coming into the season. We're going to grade them tougher than we grade CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud, redshirt freshman, never played legitimate snaps at Ohio State or in anywhere in college for that matter. Um, so we're going to grade people based off of expectations. So Kyle, um, Let's talk about C.J. Stroud, or I guess maybe just the quarterback room in general, but but, but C.J. Stroud. Um, our expectations coming into the season, like before one snap was played, was cautiously optimistic. Is that is that a good way of describing our preseason expectations? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, uh, had a bit of a rough start. So, so if we're talking like the first quarter of the year, um, Below expectations or maybe not even below expectations as much as it was um, just being a just being a freshman, just being doing some first time things. But he's come on incredibly strong as of late. He's starting to look comfortable and efficient. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm willing to give the quarterback room an A. Yeah, I agree, too. Uh, looking at CJ Stroud compared to the the country here out of uh out of the quarterbacks who've played five or more games, CJ Stroud is number four in, in passing yards per game, just doing just such a stellar job right now, taking care of the ball, 18 touchdowns, three interceptions for, for the year had a rough, rough start as we all talked about and everybody griping about him, but he's finally settling in, got that week off, got another week off here again, here to, to get himself ready for, for a very, very tough second half of the season here. Oh, for sure. Um, one of the things, yeah, I mean, the competition's going up in the second half of the year, but I, he's played better against better competition. Uh, <laughs> that's probably worth noting. But yeah, I think he just has momentum now. He has comfort now. He's not in his first two or three starts anymore. And I think that's the biggest thing with CJ Stroud is that he actually has some experience under his belt. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right, Jared, uh, let us do the running back room. Yeah. Running back room. Um, it's so we, we didn't start off the season with, with Henderson, but that's certainly where Ohio state's at now. Um, the the quarterback or excuse me the running backs in general are doing great because we can talk about Henderson and how good he's been and he has been um he's mm -hmm. averaging over 100 yards per game and that's not per start that's per game he has played in all six games but we all know he didn't play as much during the first couple as he is now right so yep but, but even then if we look at Mayan Williams He's averaging 7.8 a carry. When, when, way, my, I, when Mayan Williams is ready to return to Ohio State, that's an amazing second option. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And he's ranked currently here. Um, what, what, what was that stat? You said 7.8 yards? Oh, no, uh, 8.7. Henderson well, had 8. No, Henderson's 8.7. 8. Yeah. Mayan is 7.8. Which, if you look here, that puts Henderson number two right now in um, <laughs> in average um, yards per attempt, and then that would put uh, Williams at one, two, three, at seventh 
right now in the country. So you got the number two, number seven running backs in terms of yards per per carry. And by the way, like, let's not completely slouch on Master Teague either. He's almost six yards a carry as well. He's just, he's a very, people, Ohio State fans want to hate on Master Teague all the time. He's a very, very good running back. He's just probably not, he, I mean, he's not, not probably. He just isn't the best running back on the team. And like, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. There are Ohio State teams, say, within the last 10 or so years in which he would have been the best guy on the team. Uh, yeah. it, that's just not this team, unfortunately, for Master Teague. Mm -hmm. Yep. So overall, um, I'm going to give him an A. I'll give him an A as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. The receivers here. The receiving core. Uh, what what else can you say other than giving them an A? Just stellar, stellar team yeah. here. It, they, they've not giving them an A plus. There have been some times when they, uh, no matter there have been some a drops plus right there. There were some there were some drops, and even in the loss to the Oregon game too. Uh, but these last few games, I've I thought they they pretty much caught everything that comes to their possession there. Yeah, I give them an A. Yeah, again. So I want to state this again. If we were just doing plain rankings, they would get an A plus because they're amazing. But we're as I'll, I'll reiterate it. It's fine. We're we're grading based off of expectations. So the the expectations for the wide receiver room were up here. So it's it's actually almost impossible to give them an A plus because the expectations were so high. How do you surpass those? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, just looking here, what are they averaging? 91 yards per game for Wilson, 82 for Olave, uh, JSN with 75. as as just a stellar, stellar offensive um, or stellar receiving group we have here. Absolutely. Uh, and it's just everyone, all of the wide receivers with four or more catches – have at least 15 yards per reception. Yeah. All right. Tight ends here, Jared. I'd, I'd probably like give Isaac. I'd love to see it. I'd love to. I, I would love the opportunity to, to see it. Tight ends here, Jared. What would you get the tight ends? I'd, I'd probably give them an A minus for the year. I was thinking more like a B plus. I think we, one drops, uh, records dropped a couple, Stover's dropped a couple. Uh, I think they've been done an excellent job blocking, and that's mm -hmm. a big part of being a tight end, and they absolutely deserve credit for that. Um, from a receiving standpoint, a disappointment. And is that is that their fault? Is that Ryan Day's fault? Is that Kevin Wilson's fault? You know, who's, whose fault is it that there's not, like, actual statistical production? I don't know, but I think we were... I think we were expecting Ruckert to be a, an integral, intri uh, I can't speak tonight, Kyle, part of the offense for Ohio State. Um, but that's just not proven to have been the case. He's only caught the ball 11 times. Um, he's averaging 20, I'll round it up and say 28 yards a game. It's It's just, it's not what we were expecting. Yeah, integral. Thank you. I just couldn't, I, I, I know how to, I just, sometimes my tongue gets away from me, but yeah, I, and it's not even necessarily like Ruckert and Stover's fault that this is what's happening or it might be, I don't know, but the fact of the matter is they, they aren't producing in the receiving game the way we're expecting. So yep. I'd say, a, I'd say a B, a straight B. All right. The slobs, Jared, what would we give the slobs here? So Statistically, they are number twenty. They are ranked twenty second in um, quarterback sacks. Very good, very good for the year. Uh, I, I think, especially as of late here, yeah, I, I, I'd have to give the the Slavs an A as well. Giving giving Stroud time to to throw to scan the field to to be able to get to his um talented wide receivers, and as well as opening up those holes for Henderson and Chop and Teague as well. 
Yeah, yeah. It's you. You can't look at it. Go. Everyone, rewind and re-listen to all of the numbers I gave for the running backs, and realize that the same offensive line produced all of those numbers. Kyle yes. just pointed out the number of sacks this year. Uh, only four on Stroud. Um, I, th- that being said, the expectations were sky high because of the amount of returning starts and recruiting stars and everything else along the offensive line. So once again, mm-hmm. I, I'm just going to go a straight A and not an A plus just because, again, the the expectations were so high. I don't know how you exceed them. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they have exceeded expectations, I, but I think this is the exact offensive line we were wanting. Um, yep. They are now anyway. I, you know, they didn't have a good game against Oregon. Yeah. So it, it's hard to give them an A plus because the expectation for them was so sky high. Yep. All right. All right. Moving on to the defense real quick here, Jared. Defensive well, line. Let, let's defensive... split it. I want to split that into D tackles and D ends. Because right. the, the story is so different. All right. Let me, all right. Let me do that. So DT, let's talk about the DTs first. Let's talk about the, the tackles here. I, I'd give them a plus. Yeah. I'd give them an A. I, I think just, I'm giving them, a, I'm giving them the plus. Now, now I would give them an A plus if I'm rating, ranking, rating them the last three games here an A plus plus plus, but beginning of the year, the, those first few games, not, not as, not as stellar, but these last few games, oh boy, really, really good. That's why I'm not giving an A plus just, a, just an A. I'm going to give, I'm going to give them an A plus, um, I know they had some trouble with the rushing game in the first few weeks, but I don't think you can put all of that on the defensive tackles, although they certainly get some of it. Um, Mm -hmm. Ohio state was still trying to figure out their linebackers and their play calling on defense and everything else. Um, So I'm just, I'm not going to give, I'm not, I'm not going to blame the entire rushing defensive issues, especially considering like Oregon was killing Ohio state through the ground, but where were they doing it? They were doing it on the outside mostly. Mm-hmm. So yep. I'm I'm given the defensive tackles an A plus. They've totally exceeded my expectations. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Now, defensive ends. Uh, not meeting expectations. Um, B minus. I think you're being generous. I'd give them a C. I would give them a C for for our expectations from yeah. what we were from what we were expecting to see from these defensive ends here, not produce it, not, not doing all that. Well, not doing that. Well, I I'd give them a, a C here. Love to see more pressure coming from the outside, getting the quarterbacks to be a little bit more um, worrisome to be on, on their heels, trying to get rid of the ball quicker, just not seeing it to the level that we were hoping to see. So yeah, C. I'll, more more of the pass rush has come from the interior defensive line than the defensive ends, which is not what Ohio State's defense is designed to do. Yep. Yep. Linebackers, Jared. So here here's a situation in which our expectations coming into the season were was probably, you know, if quarterback was cautiously optimistic, I think with the linebackers, we were just cautious. <laughs> Yes. I think it was, I don't think there's any optimism. I don't think there's any pessimism. I think it was just straight caution. So while the linebackers have not been perfect and they've certainly not been great, um, we, we are grading based off of, again, where our expectations were. So I, I want to give them a B plus. Um, they were lousy at the beginning of the year, but I think we were expecting that to a certain degree, having basically no return starts in the linebackers. Maybe mm-hmm. it's down to a B. Um, it, it, real, if our expectations were, because like, have they actually played worse than the defensive ends? No, they haven't. No. But again, expectations matter here. So yep. may, maybe a straight B, a straight B for the linebackers. Yep, that's that's what I have down here, a straight B. Straight B. The, the first few games, again, seemed like that everybody was able to run on them at will. But these past few games here, boy, they they've really stepped up on on the uh on the rushing attack there or the rushing defensive side of it currently ranked 37 currently ranked 37th in the country but that's just getting better and better every week well and one of the other things that i think confuses this is is ronnie hickman 
is Ron is Ronnie Hickman a linebacker or is he a safety? Because he's been he's been maybe the best among the no, best no, players no on right. the No Mad's right. Yes is the answer. I think Buckeye Zach is right because he says yes and no. <laughs> so I <laughs> you 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 bump that grade up a little bit if we're including Ronnie, maybe it's up to a B plus or even venturing on an A minus. If you count Hick, if you count the bullet, in in this case, mostly Hickman, as a as a linebacker. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll, we'll stick with B. And for the for our fellow fans in the um, in our live chat here, A plus to the fullbacks, A plus to the okay. fullback position. Okay, you know what? That's that's fine. <laughs> All right, uh, corners, the cornerbacks here. Again, expectations, expectations, mm -hmm. ex expectations. Um, I'd, probably get, I'd probably give him a B as well, probably with the expectations too. Um, I got to go higher. I got to go. I got to go B right now. I, I, I think B. it's an A minus, maybe a B plus, maybe an A minus. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll trend more of the B plus just because of the defensive touchdowns that the DBs have been able to um, produce this year. Yeah. So maybe maybe I'll put maybe I'll bump him up to a B plus because of that. Man, Denzel Burke is quickly moving into like put him on an island, lock down the field territory. He's a true freshman. Mm -hmm. um, Cam Brown coming back with the with the uh, Achilles injury and performing better than I thought he was going to be able to this early in the year. Uh, Cam Martinez is coming around very quickly. Um, I, you know, I think maybe, maybe once seven banks really gets up to speed, I think the corners are exceeding my expectations by a lot this year. So I have to give him an A minus. Okay. Again, a, a lot of that based off of how low the expectations were coming into the year. Yep. All right. And then the, the safeties here. I'd probably give safe, the safeties a B plus as well. Maybe, maybe an A minus. I will give them an A minus if we take into consideration that Proctor's out. Um, with, if we don't take that into consideration, maybe a B. Because uh, losing Proctor's huge, right? So I, I don't, I don't know if they're, Again, it just sort of depends upon if we if we give them some partial credit for the fact that the best, most experienced safety on the team was lost. Was it week two? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so if you take that into consideration, I'll give them I'll give them an A minus B plus. Um, if we don't take that into consideration, a B or a B minus. Okay. And special teams. And again, as, as Buckeye Zach points out, depends upon where you count Rocket Hickman. <laughs> yeah. You bump All it up right. a little bit if you count him as a safety. All right. Special teams, I guess an A. Not not they're they haven't missed a field goal, haven't missed an extra point, no costly pump blocks or anything like that. Give them an A. Yeah, and I think the returning game is showing promise, even if they haven't housed mm -hmm. one yet. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. All right. All right. So that is our grades for all of the, um, for all the positions here. So let's go ahead and do a quick ad break here. Jared. Yeah. We're, we're going to do an ad break. Then we're going to come back and we're going to give out some individual player awards. All right. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company mentioned at the top of the show, a barbecue company with an amazing food truck that you can catch this week. This Monday up in Cary at the Cary Ford between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And as well as this Sunday, October 24th, at the new Regal Ford truck fundraiser. I think I'm starting to see a trend of which uh, which brand he's liking here. Um, at the down, at downtown New Regal. Um, and that is from 2.30 to 5.30 again this Sunday. Miss any of that or want to catch up more information about the Mad Canadian and his food truck, hit him up on social media up at Twitter or at Facebook to search Mad Kitty and Barbecue Company and you'll find him and all the information you need from him. Uh, 
with that, go ahead and check them out and let us know what you think of them. Uh, the Mad Kenny Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based, Marine-owned all, yeah, we already did all, did all that, right? Um, but I did not mention that all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Um, let's take a look at an individual. Let's look at a coffee here. I feel like maybe we haven't talked about the fear, no evil in a while. Um, so let's talk about that one. Uh, the fear, no evil is a black roast. That's right. We aren't talking about a dark roast. We're going one step further and going into the black roast. Uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company took their highest quality, most floral Arabica bean and carefully roasted it to the brink of flames. Uh, they monitor it with all five of their senses to ensure that this rich black dark roast is void of all light. The sheen is like polished armor. The feel is like cocoa butter. It is, has a smooth feel. Um, the smell is exotic, smoky and rich. Um, it's a, what, what else can you say? It's a, it's a great coffee. Like all of their beans it's fair trade certified and USDA organic. Um, the, the body of the coffee has a heavy creamy texture, which is rare for a coffee grown in this region, um, which is a uh, part of Indonesia. So you can find that coffee, but you can also buy a whole lot of more, a whole lot of more, a whole lot of more coffees. That's right. Uh, you can buy that and a whole lot of other coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jerry, let's get to some mid-season awards here. All right. I have not seen most of these, so... Um, oh, that's that's more than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Austin Formation, let's start it off. He names it the Kyle Award. As Kyle looks it up, which player do you look up the most? Which player do I, which player do I look up the most? Like, like looking up their statistics, or maybe I'm practicing how to say their name. Uh, Neoteote is a name that I have had to look up how to say on more than one occasion. Um, so that's that's always that's always uh, one. Uh, I'm all, I think I was looking up a lot of CJ Stroud statistics early in the year to try to prove to everyone that they were, that, that he was in fact good, <laughs> despite what everyone else was trying to say. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to Neote Ote simply because I had to look up how to spell how to say his name on several occasions. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I'd probably go with JT. I think JT probably is similar, like with what um, Jared said there. Uh, <laughs> some some other some other ones too. Tu emo lo al, tu emo ma al. Yes, uh, probably Henderson as well. I probably put Henderson in there too, just because of how little of carries he's had, but yet he's had such a monstrous first half as well. So I have to like take double double looks at his stats. I'm like, wait, he has that much rushing yards. Wait, really? So I'd, I'd probably go with Henderson as well. All right. What's next? The Esquire award player who has made a better argument this season for a future NFL career. Oh, okay. Um, let's see which, which player has opened up the most eyes to the NFL or maybe has reignited potential NFL conversations. Um, I think Jeremy Ruckert might be one because I think one of his big knocks coming into the year was that he was not a sufficient blocker. And I think mm -hmm. he has, he has fixed that. Um, like Wilson Olave, I think had high expectations coming into the year. I don't think they're necessarily improving their stock. Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if there was anyone on the team whose reputation needed mended per se. Um, maybe, 
Yeah, I think I think I got one from Gangland. Um, kind of still mine. Uh, maybe Dewan Jones. I think really has helped hit, helped him out this year, and he's only a freshman, so I'm not going to say that he like he played better because this is his first year. But man, Burke Burke's really yeah really making a name for himself right now as a true freshman. Well, and yeah, and I think that's probably more fair to say than Henderson because Henderson came in with such amazing hype. And yeah. Burke maybe didn't. Um, he wasn't even the most highly rated cornerback in Ohio State's class last recruiting yeah. cycle. So I think right. I yeah. think that's Kyle. I, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my answer. I think you're right. I, I think, yeah, I think we're going right. to give it to Denzel Burke. All right, let's move a little bit quicker here because um, we have got a lot of awards here. The Gangland Award. What player has looked the most drunk out there? <laughs> Made plays that you're like, what? How did he do that? Oh, I, I was going to go the opposite way. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the opposite way of like, what is he doing? That's a terrible play. But he, he went the, the complete, he went the complete opposite way there. How did he do that? Um. Ah, uh, let's see. I think when I... When I think of that, I think a lot of um, maybe Cam Martinez, only because he keeps popping up in real weird expect uh, real weird situations, getting interceptions, uh, yep. doing stuff like that. I, I think might be the first name that pops into my mind with with that in with that in place. Yeah, I like that. My my, oh. my only thought. What about Tyreek Williams? Oh, as Buckeye yes. Esquire Tyler, just pointed that's, that's, out. That's a great one. That's a great answer. Tyreek Williams, yes. The Nomad Award. What player came out of nowhere to help the Buckeyes? Tyreek Williams. <laughs> Tyreek Williams. And uh, sorry, but I, I think you are. Which player came out of nowhere? Denzel Burke we had no expectations for and is all of a sudden the best cornerback on the team. Mm-hmm. The Sun Card Award. What player has been the model of consistency for Ohio State this year? Um, I. Petit Ferrer. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. Um, I think Petit Ferrer would be a good one. By the way, Luke Whipler. Again, you want to talk about, like, okay. all of a sudden you have a new center. And oh yeah, uh, you we got there about the same time, Nomad. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to give that one to Luke Whipler. Yeah, agreed. How, like, how many bad snaps have we seen? I can't count one. I can't remember one. I think there's been. I think there's maybe been a, like yeah, one or two or something like that. But yeah. All right, man, we got a lot. We got a lot here, Jared. So let's what, keep going. What, let's right, keep save going. Your, all right, save your award. Which coach or player is felt to be given this nod? So like, uh, what, what about Matt Barnes? All of a sudden takes over the defensive play calling from out of nowhere and is doing yeah. a hell of a job doing it. Yeah, we can we can do that one. I'm good with that. The no, but I Zach think. Whipler is a C. Yeah. Yes, it's a joke. Um, it's fine. The Badass Award. Whom do you perceive as the most improved player of the season at this point? Ooh. Um, is, is that how we take the word badass? Uh, the Badass Award. Uh, most improved. So you want to go like from week one till now, I think might be a decent way of gauging that. Um, I think Cam Martinez looked like a complete liability and now he looks really great. Yes. 100%. Um, Burke looked, I won't say like a liability, but Burke didn't look good in week one, but is looking great now. CJ Stroud has made huge steps since week one. Um, I'm yes, going to say agreed. CJ Stroud. Okay. I'm good with that. Composure award. Which player has been able to sustain their calmness on the field and perhaps even off this season? Um, actually, let's, let's go ahead. I, that one has to be Stroud too. 
I think that one has to be Stroud too. So may, maybe let's go ahead and give Cam Martinez or Burke the badass award, and then we can give the composure award to CJ Stroud. Okay. Leadership award. Which player or coach deserves the title of midseason leader? So I, I think we immediately take Ryan Day off of the because he just is the leader. And then I'm seeing the the chat is ahead of me on this thought process. Gary Combs. Um, yes. Here's a dude who uh, f- put up with a lot in, in the public sphere of Ohio State. And for him to ex- uh, uh, accept what is essentially a demotion, but handle that with class, class and leadership and dedication and humility... Um, Kerry Combs deserves so much credit for handling what was a bad situation for everybody, himself included, at the start of the season. I don't know this answer here. Uh, Media Award, best player or coach interview so far this year. Oh, that's also no, actually Car- Combs. Yes, yeah. that's Com- yes, yes. That's also Kerry Combs. Yes, yes. The Keith Byers Award. Longest play from scrimmage that ends with only one shoe. Uh, Henderson had a one shoe yeah, this year, had didn't he? That. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did, all right. Yes. Henderson gets that award. Uh, the Boston Award. Which wide receiver showed their talent and consistency at this point in the season? I think Wilson at this point. If we're talking, yeah, the word consistency is key there. If we're really going to lean on the word consistency, then yes, it's it's Wilson. Honestly, Honestly, there, there's an argument for JSN. There have been times when Wilson, like, in his hand and drops it. You're like, how did Wilson drop that? He, he, like, never drops a pass. But JSN, I don't really recall that many that he um, that he drops. But Wilson, the back there at punt return, has shown um, a lot of composure back there. There was a time, Jerry, if you remember, a number of years ago, when we were scared to death any time that we had a returner trying to catch a punt. He's really good at he's really good at just like doing a fair catch and catching the ball, isn't he? Yes. Uh the Hawk Animal Award, the best linebacker. Cody Simon? Cody Simon, unless we're counting Hickman as a linebacker, then it's Hickman. Okay. The Fuller Award. After the fall of Proctor Proctor, who has stepped up at safety? Um, I think we're going to go ahead and not count Hickman here. Cause we are absolutely talking about a true safety. Um, I'm going to say probably ransom. Yep. I'm going to say ransom. DBU. Who's, who is the more consistent and best cornerback? It's gotta be Burke right now. Uh, again, consistent being a, a very important word there because Cam Martinez uh, took a little bit longer to get around versus the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cam uh, uh, Brown. Um, Brown has missed some games due to injury. Seven was just missing for the first few games and no one still seems to be sure why. Proctor got hurt. The only consistency in the defensive backfield this season has been Burke. Yeah. Trestle Award. Who deserves the nod for midseason special teams action? Um, I, I, does anyone? Um, I mean, I guess it would have to be um, the long snapper. Because <laughs> we don't know his name, and that's a good thing. <laughs> what about... I mean, he hasn't scored a touchdown, but man, these last these last couple of weeks here, about well, Becca. Uh, you know, I we can't give it to him now, but maybe if we revisit these awards at the end of the season, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah. The Dabo Award. Who's made more of an ass for themselves this season? There's only one answer to that. I uh, go go ahead and say it. Yeah, it's Pope. Yeah, let's yeah, let's not. It's Pope, but let's not let's not linger yeah. on that. All right, the back alley bullets. Which one two player would you want with your back alley street fight? Uh, Dwan Jones and Haskell Garrett. Yes, <laughs> yes, I 
I second that. I second that. Yeah, there, there's Dewan, no... Dewan, Dewan, Dewan Jones seems like that kind of guy that would just be there to back you up at every step of the way. Well, but not only that, but Dewan Jones is the best type of fighter. And I say that because all he has to do is show up and the other people are just gone. Yep. Like, he's... So, he, why, why would be sucking up to gangland? Like, anyway. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's absolutely Dwan Jones because he ends the fight before the fight even starts. Yeah. All right, Jared. Okay, Esquire put this question in. So is, it, is, he, is, he, in the, is he in the chat here? Yes. yes, he is. All right. The tasteful side boob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The tasteful side. I, I want to see the trophy. Name a player that you've liked, what you've seen so far, but really want to see more of it in the second half of the year. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, that's funny. Um, the uh, Evan Pryor it comes to mind right away. Um, I want to see more. I want to see more Steel Chambers at linebacker. It hard hard for this person to see field just because of the just because of how great our wide receiver crew is. Yeah. But what I've seen on, on special teams, the Becca though. Yeah. A Mecca, I think is a good answer for this. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with steel chambers at linebacker. Cause I think he's like the one guy who's not currently starting who I would like get up on a soapbox and start yelling and screaming that he should be starting. Mm -hmm. uh, the Alex Trebek award. Uh, name three players and one coach you'd want on your bar trivia team. Okay. Um, I, oh man. I, I feel, I feel, I feel that, I feel that uh, Larry Johnson would be that kind of guy that just has an abundance of knowledge to know pretty much a little bit of everything. So I would go with Larry Johnson as a, as the coach. Kyle, can can we look up GPAs? Is that a thing we can look up? <laughs> oh, I, uh, we'll I know Jack time. Miller is supposed to be an incredibly smart guy. Uh, not Jack Miller, Harry Miller, the the center. Uh, maybe Jack Miller is too. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, maybe Thayer Munford, only because he's been in school for so long. Like he's has to have picked up something at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said. Uh, Harry Miller's notably very intelligent. Uh, let's go. Let's go Thayer Munford because he's been in school so long. And then uh, maybe the same thing again, being in school for such a long time, maybe to Haskell Garrett. All right. Sounds good. Uh, is that all the questions here? I think, or I think that's, oh, nope. I no, no, no. You, we still have five more or six, six more. Do you what need to keep I scrolling missing? or something? You I just did Buck. No. You just did Buckeye Esquire. Then there's a, a block from Stewart and then one each from Buckeye Zach and Austin. You well, the, the, these are just questions here. So these are, these are just questions now. Um, That's is, fine. We're still doing Ask right, Loopcast. All right. Is Stroud holding McCord back from being an all tr true all American Heisman candidate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He is. <laughs> I mean, fact of the matter is, is that he is. <laughs> All right. How many no nose nuggets does Harbaugh store away in his mouth for safekeeping? Uh, that, that depends upon the volume um, and how many hot dogs he currently has in there and, and how much mi milk he drank that day. So <laughs> there's too many variables to answer that one, unfortunately. All right. Pick four players on, on this team and give them creative finishing moves for Mortal Kombat. Um, all right. Let's see. I think that Jack Sawyer saws them in half. Just going to pun on his name there. Uh, rocket Hit Hickman straps them to a rocket, sends them to the moon, or maybe it blows up in, in, in mid atmosphere. Uh, Steel Chambers just straight up shoots the guy with a with a steel bullet because of course um let's see i need one more uh dwan jones literally just 
crushes them. Just just crushes them in, in into the ground. Was that four? Been the, yes. Who's been the biggest surprise, Barnes or Combs? Barnes. Uh, we 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 were watching and waiting to see what was going to happen with Combs this year, based off of what happened last year. Um, we, we sort of were we were giving him another chance, and and like he 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 came. Yeah, Matt Barnes is the bigger surprise. Yeah, oh, Mr. One here, the High Heisman Award. Heis being H I apostrophe S, the player who likely gets the most greetings when they walk into the locker room. I'm going to have to give another one to Dwan Jones because, yeah, I... like, how do you miss him walking into the locker room? <laughs> yeah. Like, you I almost agree. have to do, like, a like a, a bit of a safety high just to be like, hey, hi, I'm I'm here. Please don't, please don't bowl me over. Yeah. All right, last question here from Buckeye Zach. Mikol starts at quarterback in the West Point Wildcat quadruple <laughs> option. Do we consistently win by 80? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Wow. We are way, way over on time here, but that's okay. We're having fun. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and end today's episode, Jared. All right. Uh, we're way over. Uh, visit. Just just come hang out with us in Patre- at the Patreon store or Patreon. <sighs> $3 a month. Get you everything you want on Patreon. Um, all the digital assets you want. Uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com and come hang out in our discord server uh you can see i'm barely tweeting anymore it's because i'm in the discord server it's it's uh more rewarding more fun and considerably less toxic come hang out in the discord server discord.thesloopcast.com kyle do you have anything in kyle's corner buckeyes are a an early the early uh vegas lines here has ohio state as a 19 point favorite would you take the points? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. I'm picking Ohio State. I agree. What, what does uh, everybody real, real else quick, think? What, what does what's... everybody else think in the chat? Would you take Ohio State over 19? Let's just say 18 and a half. There, we got a. We got a yes, yes. We got a yes, and yeah. All right, we got four yeses there. Kyle, I before we go, I need to know what is Pitt versus Clemson? What's the line there? Ooh. Because um, we were so we were talking about that a lot during the social screen. Uh, let's see. You want to guess it? You want to guess no, it real quick? No, we, we we're we're way over on time. Hit by two. Who? <laughs> Pit by two. Gangland Gangland was expecting <laughs> it to be much higher, and I told him he was crazy. <laughs> Pitt is favored uh, over Clemson. Everyone, wow. let's let's take that into consideration. Let's. Um, that's 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 the thought we're going to leave you with tonight. Um, so with all of that being said, uh, tonight's ending music is by a Columbus based band called Mr. Moon, M-I-S-T-E-R Moon. Uh, you'll find links down in the description. YouTube people, if you want to hear the song along with the audio people, uh, go down in the description. There's a link to the song uh, podcast people. You can just you can just hang around. It's it's coming straight to your ears. Uh just 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 don't do anything and it'll happen for you. So uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mr. Moon. <laughs>